I'm gay. <laughs> uh, all right. It's not, yeah. No. Attention, please. Attention. I am gay. Repeat. I am very gay. Just go about your business normally. As heterosexual. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and early reviews are in on Margot Robbie's Birds of Prey featuring Harley Quinn. Wait, what is it? Harley Quinn featuring Birds of Prey? I don't know. It's too long of a title. That's that's just going to be what I'm going to call it. The movie that's too long of a title. Surfshark, which is an excellent VPN where I have a exclusive three months plus one extra month for free and save up to 83% using my promo code quartering. If you aren't using a VPN now, you absolutely should consider one. And if there's one that you would like a recommendation for, Surfshark has backed this channel for now the second month in a row. Their software will allow you to unlock Netflix, protect your online identity, find the best prices on things online, bypass censorship everywhere. The software also works mobily on your laptop and mobile phones. So protect yourself today. Don't wait a minute longer. Use my link in the description below where you can support the channel and protect yourself with Surfshark. Now, Harley Quinn is a much beloved character by many. I have to admit, I've never really been into her as a character. I've Most of what I've seen has been cringe, unfortunately, including the DC uh, cartoon Harley Quinn. Now, old Harley Quinn from the old Batman cartoon, like back when I was a kid, was always fun. And obviously, there's the uh, mental imagery of Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. That's very spicy indeed. But I've never been a huge lore guy. I've got to, you know, admit up front, I wasn't super interested in seeing this movie anyway. I've only followed the the story because of a lot of the marketing. Early on, uh, we saw Ewan McGregor come out and say uh, that. Um, the movie was about everyday misogyny. Uh, he's been continuing to say that. You can see this in NME. Birds of Prey, Ewan McGregor, and Chris Messina say they're proud of the film that tackles everyday misogyny. The Harley Quinn spinoff is released next month. Ewan McGregor and Chris Messina have said they are proud to star in Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Oh, that's the t that's the name of it. Okay, okay. Because, quote, it tackles everyday misogyny. McGregor plays mob boss Roman Sinus and Harley Quinn spinoff in the Harley Quinn spinoff while Messina takes on part of the right-hand man Victor Zizaz. Speaking at the premiere of the DC movie, McGregor said, We talked about it. We were both really proud to be in a film that tackled misogyny. Not only to the extreme ends of misogyny, but also everyday mild misogyny that women have to put up with. Oh my God, somebody pray, give him the award now. Ewan McGregor uh, might be the biggest virtue signaler in Hollywood, and there are a lot of them. Go goes on to say, quote, the film's peppered with references to that. He continued, we're just proud to be part of and to be the misogynists in the movie, to help flag up to guys who need to know that that time's done. When you see this, right? When you see this, I don't know who it inspires to want to pay $15 to see this film. Now, DC has had a long and hit or miss um, kind of history of their films. Some are really good. Some do very good in the box office. Aquaman, for example, did very good. Christopher Nolan's Batman series is obviously very good. Wonder Woman did very good. I'm less interested in this new Wonder Woman because I'm definitely over this like 80s throwback retro era that Hollywood continues to milk to death. But I'm definitely not into a film that is about preaching men bad. Birds of Prey also stars Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. By the way, the one that Half of Hollywood was whining and, and 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 complaining that she didn't have enough lines in the Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, her herself, though, obviously never said anything about it and was fine to it. Um, it also uh, has Rosie Perez as Renee Montoya, Ella as Jay Basco, and as Ella, Jay Basco as Cassandra Cain. The movie will be released in the UK on February 7th and will also boast a star-studded soundtrack, including bands I've never heard of. Now... 
this has been the marketing of it, right? Then yesterday, I saw a bunch of people running running this article uh, in the Daily Mail. You'll see headline. Ewan McGregor and Chris Messina tease that their Birds of Prey villains, Black Mask and Victor, are probably gay. Wow, thanks. So stunning and brave. I know a lot of you probably were on the fence about seeing this movie, but if you don't support it now, you're just a homophobe. It seems like these things are said to, you know, inspire headlines like this. Sure. But... I don't understand when these people will learn that this does not put butts in seats. You know, I just don't see this uh, inspiring the average gay to pay $15 to see a movie that they didn't want to see in the first place just because the villains are also gay. This whole identity politics thing needs to go away. Instead of focusing on a good film and producing a good film, this is the stuff that they put out. You know, both McGregor and 48, 48 and Messina 45 revealed during their Hollywood and Highland fan event for Birds of Prey in Hollywood on Thursday. Var Variety's Mac Malkin mentioned that there was a talk line that the characters seemed to be more than just friends. Of course, just like modern day comics, by the way, two men and two women can't just be friends. They, of course, have to be lovers. It's very complicated. Their relationship is very much based. There's a want and a need for sure. Both characters, Black Mask and Victor Zaz, have a long history in the DC comics, with Black Mask debuting in 1985 and Victor in 1992. While neither character was mentioned as gay in the comics, it's possible they could be portrayed as gay in the movie. Of course they will be! Of course! Because when you don't have a good movie, you rely on identity politics. And you might be saying, Jeremy, don't you think that, that you're jumping the gun here a little bit on the gay bait? Uh, because that's what I see a lot of this stuff is. It's baiting for headlines. It's They don't really care about these things. They care about putting butts in seats. They care about getting free press from woke media outlets. Uh, not, none of the articles, by the way, are talking about the awesome action scenes or the deep plot lines or the riveting uh, dialogue in the film. No, they're talking about are these two characters who have never canonically been gay, are they now gay for more reasons? And you ask, why might all of this be happening? Well, early reviews are out for Birds of Prey and it doesn't look good. Now, if the movie is on the nose about misogyny, my soggy knees, you know, these two characters being gay and all this, stuff, if that's all the movie has to offer, it's going to review very poorly. Uh, will the critics give it an ultra high score because of wokeness? Yeah, because here's the here's the thing with modern day critics. They care more about movies, as I said, making history than making good movies. Uh, so it's so easy to control these critics with a little narrative here and there. And then they'll just pick, oh, um, uh, let's say Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker. Oh, too much fan service, 55%. Even though, obviously, the Rise of Skywalker is objectively not a 55%. It wasn't great, but, you know, the movie was a, a, certainly a high, se a mid to high 70s. Uh, so you just know, and you read through the, a lot of the reviews where they were whining about fan service. Now you see this uh, coming in from Bounding into Comics. Early audience reviews for Margot Robbie's Birds of Prey film are arriving. On Letterboxd, a number of individuals have indicated they've seen the film and are already providing feedback. Letterboxd notes 125 people have rated the film. Only 76 ratings are actually visible, though. Of the 76 ratings shown, 31 people gave the score of five stars. That's the max. Um, that's about 41% of those who rated the film gave it the maximum score. Uh, one person giving it a 4.5, six giving it a 4. Um, but more, we look down, no, 10 people gave it a 2, 3 people gave it a 1.5, 4 people gave it a 1, and 6 people gave it a 0.5. So the average rating is a 3.3 .3 out of 5. Now that's a 6.6 .6 out of 10 if you want, or a 66 out of 100 if you want to convert this to a uh, Rotten Tomatoes number. But it's interesting. Uh, you know, here's what some of the reviewers are saying. Paula Aguilar gave the film 3.5. She writes, quote, the power. The film doesn't make much sense, but 
All my life, I've seen films about guys fighting without any reason, and now watching girls kicking some butt for any reason fills you with power. If this is a type, obviously. Is this what empowerment feels like? Is this what the boys feel when watching those nonsense films? Give me more. So in your own review, you say people fighting for no reason is nonsense, but when it's women, it's awesome. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? However, that is interesting is that she does not show up on the actual ratings page for Birds of Prey. It's unclear why. Here's another reviewer, Eduardo, giving the 3.5. He writes, it's an okay film. Hurts me to say that I was expecting more, a lot more. Margot is perfect, and it seems like she has a lot of fun playing Harley, but the rest of the cast feels like waster. The action scenes are cool, especially the precinct and the funhouse, but the climax doesn't feel like a climax since there wasn't a lot of development to get there. It just feels like a missed opportunity. I think the idea is... You know, they know people love Margot Robbie and they know people love her as Harley Quinn. So I don't see this movie, honestly, rating probably below. If I had to guess right now what the audience score is going to be for this film, I'm going to say I it would be I would be shocked if it was below 60. Uh, will it be 80 or 90? That seems extraordinarily unlikely. Audience scores will probably put this film in the low 70s, which could be considered average. But it is questioning it is curious that they keep trotting out all this fake wokeness for uh headlines now and also the people that have seen the film this early obviously are either mega fans or insiders with access so who knows how fair they're really going to be uh you know here's one how birds of prey has been marketed makes sense considering what they had to hide however I still question how it will perform at the box office. Possible spoilers. I won't spoil anything out of respect for the studio. However, after seeing the film, I can see why the trailers have been meh. The movie got an R rating, and this is a very hard R. I mean, this might be the goriest mainstream comic book movie I've ever seen. You see faces sliced open, broken bones, all bursting eardrums, lots of cursing. Uh, the gay aspect involving Black Mask is very subtle. It's not explicit, but it's pretty obvious. Harley Quinn gets the most screen time, but most of the other characters get their fair share. The character I thought was a bit underused was the Huntress. Box office potential. I think the gore will hurt its chances <clears throat> in getting kids, well, it's rated R, to go see it. Uh, this is a movie that rarely, really not meant for children. It's pretty brutal. I think teens will love it, though. I think this will make John Wick numbers probably a bit more, given Harley Quinn's brand. $200 million domestically. That would be strong. I expect uh, WOM to be very good, quality-wise. It's better than the Suicide Squad. The choppy editing is nowhere to be seen. The jokes are funnier. Margot Robbie is better, though I still think she's too self-aware. I thought Ewa McGregor stole the show. The actress who played Cassandra Cain was also surprisingly good. So, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, you know, Birds of Prey is expected to have an opening weekend box office take of $49 million. Box Office Pro predicting it could be between 40 and 60. They also predict the film will have a final domestic haul of $125 million. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being totally honest and upfront that this movie just clearly isn't for me. Would I watch it on cable or Netflix or something like that? Uh, sure. Uh, I haven't seen anything from the trailers to make me want to go spend the money on it. But reviews are in. Not very good. Uh, but I guess we'll wait and see. It should be interesting to see based on all what they're choosing to market. I'm not so sure. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.